one from Cullen, looking for Brown Hill again. Oh, he helps it off. Big chance here for Tower. Can he get the cross in? He can't! Rodriguez in it! Hello and welcome back to Turf Moor House TV and thank you very much for joining us this evening. We're back, we've got a bit of a new look going on as well, but you've still got the same old ugly mush giving you shit about Burnley basically. Uh, hope everybody is well, thank you everyone for tuning in and we have got a Manchester City fan, one that I don't know, might have been born in Oran. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's a glory hunter, uh, not at all. Uh, but I'm sure he's absolutely still buzzing his little titties off through that um, treble win. And we'll get into that as well a little bit later on. Guys, if you like what you see, uh, thank you very much for the love and support so far. But if you can, please absolutely Hulk smash that like button and share it if you can. And if you are new around here, then give us a subscription. All you got to do is click that subscribe button and you can... Yeah, you essentially done. That's it. It's free. Cost you nothing. Speaking of things that cost, though, memberships. You can now sign up for a membership. Uh, £2.99 and per calendar month if you want to join us. Uh, you get loyalty badges, member shout-outs, guest appearances on the channel uh, if you wanted to come on uh, in certain shows, exclusive emojis, and you also feature on our YouTube page. So if you want to do that, please, you know, don't hesitate. Um, there is a join button for you on YouTube, and uh, yeah, it'd be good to uh, have that support from you guys. But all support is good, whether it's monitors value or just you guys in the chat. So I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, we are on social media. Um, we're on threads and stuff, but it seems like that's even gone dead these days. Um, however. We, like I said, we are on the socials, and here's just a little video of where you can check us out. Without further ado, here he is. Hello. MCFC Hibbs, Charlie Hibbert. How are you doing? Not bad, mate. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, not too bad. I'm living, living the dream, shall we say. You know, we're both sat here, comfortable champions of the, our respected divisions. Um, I, yeah, like I say, we've not spoken for a while. First and foremost, how have you been? Uh, and tell people where they can like show support to you and uh, all your stuff. Yeah, I'm not bad, first of all. Thank you for asking. Uh, uh, two YouTube channels, Dugout David, the football channel, cover at City and football content. Uh, hit the Apex, the F1 channel, and at MCFC Hips on Twitter. Happy days. So the Twitter link and the YouTube link is in the description below. Just want to say as well, we are going to start putting these back on the podcast platforms as well. So you, if you're listening to us now, thank you very much for your support. Uh, we are going to try and ramp that up if we can and when we can. Uh, I'm going to try and get into the swing of things. Uh, a couple of comments then before we get into that. Uh, Cindy's in nice and early. Hi, Dan. We'll try to make the show. I've missed you guys. Excited for the Clarets and being back in the Premier League. Cheers. No, I appreciate that, Cindy. And uh, hope all is well out in the States. Hope everything is good with yourself. Rene, hope you're well. I'm sure you're happy with the win from uh, yesterday's result against Burton in the Cup. And then first out away at Tranmere. Not a bad shout for you guys. Uh, Oliver's in. Good evening to yourself. Up the Clarets indeed, Ollie. Uh, Connor's in as well. Says, come on, Billy. Um, <laughs> Anthony's in. He says, big up, Daniel Ugly Sod. Mr. Herbert's in the chat, as usual. Uh, Max in the building. Good evening, Dan. Hope you and Kate are well. All is good in the hood, brother. All is good in the hood. 
Uh, Rene says, it's company versus Pep. It is. It is. It's the master versus the apprentice. Um, Into says, hi, guys. Massive hi to you. Uh, Luke and the missus all saying good evening and hey. Uh, and Anthony says, big up, Chibs. You ain't winning the Prem this season. I mean, what do you say uh, to that? Well, he was top for 240-odd days last season and didn't win it. So, well... We'll keep it to on the pitch. Uh, they, yeah, can they, you, they can you win their glory. You pick a trophy up, they pick a bottle. They pick yeah. a bottle, don't they? They oh, can win their friendlies. Cool. We'll win the big things. Hey. 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 Oh, um, Connor says neither is Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and David Anthony on uh, Facebook has said, um, 4-0 City tomorrow. Got a bad feeling. Yeah, get your predictions in. Get your uh, predictions in. Uh, Ollie says, hi down my mate Tony Williams. Uh, he's he works at William Hill in Burnley. He's walking in Spain for cancer. Ah, massive respect, massive respect for that. Um, like I say, anybody who does things like that for charity is uh, you know, commended in my eyes. So brilliant work and uh, keep going, Tony. Everybody, uh, everybody is with you, mate. Um, thanks for bringing that up, Ollie, as well. Um, right then, let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Football is back. It is. It is. The Premier League is here, and I mean, I'm sure. Last time I checked, it was you know randomly generated. You know these fixtures. It doesn't randomly seem generated. Anymore. Champions against champions, company against Pep. I think. I think it was chosen yeah. to be honest. Well, it, for me, looking at it, I thought it's either that. Oh, we're going to go up against Dash or something. And, yeah. you know, yeah. it'd be one of them sort of stories. But it is obviously Pep versus company. And what have you, what have you thought of Burnley first and foremost? Like, what have you, what have you seen of Burnley? Have you seen any of Burnley in the Championship? And what yeah. do you think of Burnley now since, you know, the change in what they've done uh, since Dash has left the building? Well, it's all completely changed, hasn't it? At uh, the yeah. start of last season, People were saying Burnley would struggle. Some were saying they could do a Sunderland and get relegated back to back. That that suddenly changed and, of course, comfortably won the title. Um, it's a completely different brand of football with playing out the back. And, yeah, it's just completely changed at Burnley and I'm expecting a good season from the Clarets as well this season. Yeah, it's, it should it should be interesting. Um especially with the transfer dealings we've been doing. Uh, LS Davies, how are you, my friend? Uh, says, interesting, Charles' opinion. Not long to go to submit FPL teams. Is Gvardoil, uh, however it's said, um, starting and getting good minutes? Is Foden getting regular starts with the with Perqueta links? Um, I don't think Gvardiol will start regularly. Not straight away, anyway. After a couple of weeks, he might break in. Um, yeah. And Lily Folding as well, to be honest. He weren't in the team towards the end of last season. And yeah, I think it'll be similar, to be honest. No, fair shout. Fair shout. Um, so then, let's start on last... Let, let's talk last season. Um, as much as, you know, it's been a success for both of us, the treble. Yeah. I mean, did you think it was going to happen? Or was it more uh, hope than expectation? Well, if you asked me in January, I would have snapped your hand off just for the league title. We were that far behind Arsenal. Uh, so to end up with a treble, weren't bad. Uh, might no. be an understatement. No. Not bad, just, mate. I love how you just brush it off. Like, it's just a treble. It's not. Yeah. We'll see we do what we want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the icing on top of the cake was beating United in the FA Cup final. That I think that topped. I think Inter Milan will always be the best moment of my life as a City fan, but United is very close second. Yeah, I had my fr I had my wrong camera on. I've got my webcam plugged in. I was on the camera attached to the laptop, and it was just a bit naff. Um, but that that feels a bit better that as well. Um, so yeah, sorry you were say you were saying there. That obviously, you know, you just snapped anyone's hand off for that in January. Um, Champions League. I think it's one been one of them that is. That's what it's always been about for City, isn't it? Having a manager that can take them that one step further and get them that penultimate goal. Um, how long do you think Pep will stay there for? Now, basically, everything's been achieved pretty much. It's just about keeping that 
sustained and continuing, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think he'll go at the end of his current contract, which is the end of next season, I believe. So, two more seasons, I believe, for Pep. Oh, fair play, fair play. At least that gives us two more seasons with Vincent Company. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, fan reactions, football club. Hope you guys are well. So, are you guys doing a watch along tomorrow? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm away this weekend. Uh, the missus decided to book a weekend away on the opening day of the season. So oh I explained God. I explained that we do have to find a pub. I am not missing the opening game of the season. However, we could be enjoying the holiday five minutes into the game if Arlen's or like in inspired form. So you know it's it's one of those. We'll just see how it goes long term. Um let, obviously we've got to talk about the community shield. Um bit of a signal for you really uh, in that when you were sort of pretty much on top in that game yeah well it was a fluke to be honest Arsenal 101st minute massive deflection sneaks in past Ortega and I knew as soon as it went to penalties we'd lose to be honest we're not built for penalties um, and we've got a very bad record with him and he took Haaland off for some reason which surprised me to be honest which yeah. I think it shows Pep's he didn't really care, to be honest, and none of the City fans did either. No, I mean, it, it's a, it's another bit of silverware, which obviously I know Arsenal will celebrate till the cows come home, because <laughs> one, one they didn't battle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've looked at it both ways and thought, right, well, Arsenal seems to get one over City, your head's going to be down, or is this where they go, whoa, 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 nah, we're not having that. And now we're going to get that 6-0 dick in again like we normally do. Um, it, it, it's, you don't know what Man City you're going to get. Because obviously you st you guys have changed your philosophy. We've, we're have we still playing the City of old where we're sort of pushing wingers into a, a, in moving them into like attackers. Where you've obviously changed it up now since Haaland's come in and found that man up top that you need to sort of pick out. Um, and it has changed the way you adapt and play, hasn't it? Yeah, well, full-backs tucking into midfield, uh, the 3 two, 5 or whatever you like to call it, that's completely changed compared to even the season before last. So, yeah, Pep's constantly tweaking it and it's how he constantly wins. Yeah, I mean, he is a natural, natural born winner. Um, looking forward to this season then, I mean, are you worried now with, I won't say worried, but obviously Arsenal had that demise last year where they um, obviously threw, threw the Premier League away. And, you know, the urgency of you guys to literally just go, well, we're not, we're not giving up. You know, we're not you. We're not Chelsea. We're not Liverpool. Um, and you guys just found, you know, that next level. Are you, is the sort of a bit of a worry that, that could also spur the teams on that you had around you because of how much they fell and how much they'll want to try and be on par with little city as fans sometimes like to call it. Well, I think there is going to be a drop-off. You can't consistently win trebles and quadruples every year, so no. there is going to be a drop-off. Um, and a few teams underperformed last season as well. The likes of Liverpool, they'll improve. Chelsea will improve. Tottenham will improve, but Obviously, they won't be challenging for the title. Um, yeah, and I, it'll be a couple of teams in the title race, I believe, and it'll be an interesting season. Definitely. I mean, any anybody that stands out for you in terms of transfers, I mean, you're happy with the business you've done so far or is there well, a, a certain area you'd rather the club focused on in trying to improve? Well, there's the been these Paqueta links over the last few days and I think it's a bit too much money to be honest. 85 million I think the link rumour was today. Um, Gavardio's a good signing, probably one of the best young centre-backs in the world. Uh, Kovacic for 25 million is another good signing but we've lost Mares, we've lost Gundogan, we could still lose Walker and Bernardo so if we can keep Walker and Bernardo I think it'll be a good window for us. Yeah, I mean, I'm already shocked at the fact of what Burnley's done in this transfer window. Um, and what company did last season as well was 
you know, bring these young players in that nobody's ever heard of unless you've come across them in Football Manager or something. Uh, and then they just played out their skin. I mean, company came to Burnley with a, you know, a task of trying to build a team that gets better over two to three years and then gets promoted. I don't think he expected these bunch of this crop of players to come in and just literally kick the bucket and say, nah, we're going for it. We're going for it. We're going back up. Simple as. There's no questions. And we, you know, we put teams to the sword and it was good to see that we had that mentality, the football that we're playing as well. But we've done that again this year. You know, Alan Pace, he must, you know, he's, he's starting to become a bit like the boy who cried wolf because he's telling us all, uh, don't I expect it to be another crazy window. Crazy window, mate. We've spent just over 100 million, according to media reports, anyway, on fees. We're linked with every player that's worth a valuation of 15 mil. And we are just, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just like, poof. when you're going from Sean Dice going, oh, well, the market's very difficult, you know, and uh, we've got to try and keep up with the way we do it. It, it. The business model here at Burnley doesn't stretch the budget that far. No, I'm sorry, Sean, bullshit. When you've got a chairman who's just literally come in, give Vincent Company, you know, 100 million, we're still not apparently finished. And it's like, what the heck? Um, it, it's, it is very, very mad to see that happen, happening at Burnley. And another centre mid for me and a left back really does share, share us up a bit. Because um, at left back, we are weak as piss, to be honest. Uh, Charlie Taylor, who's been an absolute stalwart for the club, Brilliant, but he's got to that point now where in a company system, it just doesn't seem to work. Um, but Dash is trying his tactics, the same tactics I just mentioned. Dash is trying that at Everton. The fan margins, malarkey, and each game as it comes. But no, don't, li don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Nobody just wants to play dinosaur football. That's what it is. Um, so City then. City then, where do you think they finish this season? Uh, I mean, we've seen with Liverpool, they won the league and then they sort of dropped off. You see other teams have relatively, you know, success. See, personally, I think Newcastle will drop off a little bit now that they've got Champions League because a lot of teams that get European competitions and things like that, it seems to derail the season. I'm not saying that City would do that because the B team and C team is strong enough. I mean, you could put your women's team out and they'll absolutely <laughs> annihilate us. So, um, and that's no disrespect to the women's team, by the way. It's just how strong players are that play for Manchester City. Um, where, do, where do you see this season then uh, on, a real, on a real spectrum? Well, I think you've got to aim for the title again. I'm going to say we win the league, but I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't. Uh, I think at least top four, if we finish outside Champions League spots, it's an absolute travesty, to be honest. So, I'd say minimum... Top three, I think, but I do yeah. think we'll win the league again. Yeah, Connor says uh, he thinks you're playing it smart, saying don't set expectations too high, uh, so that you can only be happy with the results. Um, Alan's in. Hope you're well. He says a bit late to the party. I'm staying away from media. All I know is Teller is not home, and I'm pissed off, mate. I'm hoping Vincent Company's press conference today was asked about Nathan Teller and Ian Matson, and he said at the moment they're not our players. Now, he could have just said, they're not our players, but he said, at the moment. So, this part of me thinks there's still a few irons in the fire with those deals. The only issue we've got with Matson is Pochettino it likes what he's seen from Matson in pre-season. Uh, and Nathan Teller, well, you know, Southampton didn't rate him, sent him out on loan. Fans thought it was shit. And now he's gone back and they've robbed our song calling him Nathan Teller baby and then he's a god and everything and he only scored one goal at opening day season, which even got ruled out away from him. However, I would still love to see Nathan Teller in Claret and Blue. Uh, Rene says, Man City are champions again. Uh, John says, ouch, knocking Sean Steady on Dan. Uh, no, not knocking him. I just think it's some of the stuff he said over the years about how the market you know, we've got to adapt to the market and things like that. I'm not going to do the voice again because I'll just mess my throat up. But it's just literally, you can see still coming out with that same garbage. <laughs> There's no word for it. Same like, drivel. Um, 
at Everton. And as you can see, if you look further than the end of your nose, Sean, there is talent out there. Um, Yank says, United uh, has now sold two of our four keepers and lost our only backup to injury today. Ouch, that'll be bad. That seems bad. And Alan says, put the women out. We can... Uh, Dirty boy. Dirty boy. Uh, Sarva Leader says, all right, Dan, how are you? Do you reckon Maguire's a great signing? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, I actually think Harry Maguire would do really, really well under David Myers, especially at West Ham. He could come in and sort of be that like Craig Dawson type player who always seems to be at the back stick, get those headed goals. I think he would work pretty well at West Ham. If anything, it could revitalise his career. But do not quote me on that. This is Harry Maguire. This is Harry Maguire. Uh, if you sign in England's Harry Maguire, then you're onto a winner. If you sign in United's Harry Maguire, then you've just I don't know, pissed a load of money up the wall. Um, LS Davis says, can't see Teller coming now. Close to a deal for 11 million euros for right winger um, Luca Vacchio. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. It depends. I mean, Townsend were meant to be coming as well, but, you know, let's see. Uh, Rene says, in my opinion, Dash is getting sacked by Everton. <laughs> Max says, Lego head. <laughs> uh, John says, paid six million to leave United. Jesus. Um, Pace finally showing Americans can own a team smartly. I've loved seeing JJ Watt and Dude Perfect being involved as well. Mate, it's been absolutely fantastic. Anthony? I'm going to ask you about that later on when we do our Premier League predictions. So uh, it's at nine o'clock when the watershed's over. So feel free to go on a rant if you want. Um, but either way, you say you sport Bristol. I mean, you have to try and surprise your ass off the sofa with a spade to get to Ashton Gate. You. Um, so we'll we'll speak we'll speak about that then. Um, you said then Pep, he's only got two years left. Who then comes in? I mean, I know everyone's probably going to say, well, if company's still got that success train going, he's sort of going to have a similar pathway to the likes of what Gerard had, Lampard. I mean, do, do you sort of feel that same way or do you think that there's somebody else out there that that can match Pepper or continue that success train that, that City are on? Well, I think it all depends how Burnley do this season and next, to be honest. If I have two good seasons, I think company comes in, to be honest. If not, I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, it depends who's free at the time. Who in, in a job, it can all change over two years. So, to be honest, I probably couldn't give you a definitive answer other than company. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the logical one. I think the best thing about... This is is if he is still with Burnley in two years' time and goes to City, it's almost like a steady progression where Lampard took that huge jump from Derby where he got the handouts to you know to Chelsea to, to piss that one up the wall, go to Everton, just showed the fact that he's still out of his depth there, and then go back to Chelsea and nearly relegate them. Um, so I mean, you know, Gerard's had to now bugger off to Saudi Arabia, you know, because I'm guessing there were no job in England that he, he was clearly worthy of. Um, it, it, it just needs to be a case of doing and saying the right things with company, isn't it? Because I think at the moment he is, from our perspective, the way he's changed everything, I think he could go into Manchester City and really make a good go of it. Um, I mean, for you, with Pep... Does Pep retire as a manager after City or does he go, you know, onto another club? I mean, where where, do, where would you say that he, he goes once he's, once he's left? I could say two things, to be honest. It's either another of the top leagues. He's already been Germany, Spain and England, so France, maybe somewhere like that. Uh, he could go Saudi Arabia. They get a massive paycheck over there or goes into international management. Uh, I can see that happening as well. So I think it's one of those three things. No, that's a, that's a good shout. Uh, Max has Pep to manage for Spain. And could you see it? Potentially, yeah. It's, I think he'd have to manage an elite international team. He can't manage someone crap because it's Pep Guardiola at the end of the day. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's not going to be stood there with like Antigua or someone like that. Is he? <laughs> um, Alan says there, Zorori, five years. Zorori, you know, um, signs a contract extension, as does Flaming Manuel Benson. It's all happening. The, the, just everything's positive at Burnley at the minute. Uh, and I do agree with you, Mac. Why have we not got rid of Donkey on a perm? Why is it another loan? Yes, Bout Beghorst has gone on loan to Hoffenheim for the rest of the season. It's almost like we've done a swap in terms of loans. We've got uh, Jakob Brun Larsen on loan from Hoffenheim, and they've took a car toss off us for a season. Um, but I don't know. I mean, technically, the money that we've got from Manchester United, Besiktas, and Hoffenheim will have pretty much covered nearly probably what we paid for him in, tran in terms of his transfer fee. So if we do get a transfer fee for him next season, then who knows? Or if Hoffenheim have an option to buy him for an extra bit of money, I think we'll have pretty much, you know, made the money back. If not, got a little, you know, 30, 20, 30 p extra. <laughs> um, like you said it, Max says it there as well. He goes to Saudi for silly amounts of money. Um, if Messi retires playing into Miami, he can manage City. I don't think. Uh, yeah. Messi would do that. Um, should have done a straight swap. Yeah, we should have done. Uh, we should sign City Sergio Gomez on loan as a Matson replacement. I would have loved that. I would have loved that. I mean, company worked with him at Anderlecht. Uh, the thing is, for Gomez, he wants to try and push to get into that City team. Yeah. Uh, and you can't blame the man for trying, can you? I mean, obviously, if you believe in your own ability, why not try and push yourself to do it? Yeah. Yeah, and I can see him breaking in for FA Cup, Carabao Cup, some Champions Leagues. I think he'll get more game time this season. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. I mean, another player Burnley will link with from City as well, since we seem to just be getting, you know, pulling pulling all the, the half-decent players out of the youth system to sort of nurture. Uh, Cole Palmer's another one who's been linked, but again... He wants to try and have more game time. Uh, I think Pep said it as well that Cole Palmer and his agent last year weren't happy with how much playing time he got. Um, I mean, is that one that you could sort of see running up until towards deadline day if he does, you know, not get much game time in August? Well, I think if he does leave, I think he could go permanently, to be honest. I, I know Brighton okay. are interested, West Ham are interested as well. Uh, 30 million, I think I read. So it's, it's not not cheap, but it'd be a good signing for a club towards the lower end of the Premier League. Definitely. Uh, and one player I've not mentioned, who I have to mention, who played for us last season, THB, Taylor Harwood Bellis. Um, it's very bleak his chances of playing at City now. Uh, I think he. Felt that already last year when he came to us on loan uh, after signing Akanji. He was he was a bit like, oh, right, brilliant. I'll go out on loan. You sign another defender. You know, why not give me a chance? And you could sort of get that sort of feeling from him. And uh, now you've obviously gone and signed a very young, talented defender in uh, Josco. I'll go with that. It's easier to say. Um, so, Taylor Howard Bellis must be thinking, I have to get out of here to you know, make a name for myself. Yeah, yeah. I've not heard anything about Arwood Bellis, to be honest, but I wouldn't be surprised if he went back to Burnley. I know he played very well last season. He could go to a team towards the top of the championship, like a Leicester, uh, Rene's team, Enzo Mareska, their manager, of course. He yeah, worked yeah. with him at City, so could be a link there. So I think it'll be lower end of the Premier League or higher championship team again. Oh, that's true. That's true. Alan said we had so many on loan, but all want to stay. Yeah, I mean, even even in Taylor Howard Bellis's sort of farewell message, it was it wasn't almost like a goodbye, but like until I see you again, sort of thing. Um, but I just think in terms of defenders, we've already pretty much got everyone covered, unless there's one or two that we decide, you know, to ship to ship on and and get rid of, uh, which. You know, it leads me to City as well. You know, you've uh, signed Kovacic. Uh, I mean, 
is there more players for you that need to go out of the building to to free up a bit of space? I don't think, to be honest, no. Uh, Mares has gone, as I mentioned before, same as yeah. Gundwan. Uh, Kovacic is the uh, Gundwan replacement, even though they're different players completely. Um, Mares, there's been links with Elise, links with Paqueta, links with Jeremy Doku from Stade Rene as well. Yeah, um, good player. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone else will leave apart from a fringe player, maybe like Cole Palmer, like Sergio Gomez on loan, maybe Calvin Phillips. I know he didn't exactly pull up any trees in his first season. No. Um, as I said, guys, get your comments in uh, for the scoreline you think it is. I'm starring everybody's scoreline so we can go through them towards the end. Um, so I appreciate everyone who's put one in so far. But do get your comments in for that. Um, who's Who do you think is going to be your standout player then this season? It's pretty much a stupid question to ask that to a City fan when you've got Erling Haaland up front. But take Haaland out of the equation. Who, the, it, it, Yeah, if we take Haaland out of it, because it's just basically yeah. the question yeah. answers itself, who for you is going to stand out this year for Manchester City? Uh, take Haaland out. We'll take De Bruyne out as well, because he'll be up there again. Yeah. Um, it's tough. I'm going to go with more of a fringe player. I think Foden will play a bigger part this season, maybe more centrally, seeing as all gundogan has gone. Uh, Grealish was one of our best attackers last season. I think he'll have another good season. And if we bring in Paqueta or Elise or Doku, it'll be interesting to see how much game time they get, how well they're playing their first season as well, if they come to City. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's happening with Calvin Phillips? Because, again, you know, he left Leeds to come to you, sort of was given these promises of game time. And it's... I don't know, oh, for me, it almost seems like with Calvin, I, I know he's had his injury issues as well. Um, but, you know, there is a good player in there. It, do you think it's... Uh, what? Who? I'm trying to think of the player that I had in my mind. Almost like, it sounds disrespectful me saying this, but is he your Deli Alley? Potentially. He might be out of his depth. Uh, Rodri played 56 games last season and he's come out and said he can't do that again. So he's got to get more game time, surely. He'll play some part in the Premier League. He'll play most cup games as well. So if he does stay, that is, uh, which I don't think is a big if. I think it's more likely he stays than goals. But if he yeah. does stay, I think he'll play a bigger part this season. Definitely. Oh, fair shout, fair shout. And uh, who's the one that Burnley need to look out for? Oh, well, no. Again, stupid question. Um, Morris has gone. Get in. So he's not getting an hat trick this time against us. Uh, I mean, who, who stood out from Burnley's perspective for you? Uh, who are you not looking forward to coming up against? Well, that, tell again, us stupid question to ask season, a City well. fan when it's just like, uh, throw anyone you want at us and we'll just we'll just hammer them anyway. Um yeah. But yeah, yeah, Teller stood out last season, but yeah, go yeah, on, you were saying. gone Southampton, so I'd say maybe Manuel Benson. I know he's got, he can score a good goal from outside the box, did it at Blackburn away, as I'm sure you remember winning the league on that night. Uh, mustn't have been bad. Um, yeah, so I think either Benson or Zorori, to be honest, on either side. Yeah, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that that's where our uh, sort of flair and attack comes from. Um, even though we do like to obviously try and play it through, but Alan says, Yeah, Benson. I mean, he's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, the transfer window closes on the 1st of September. I think, is it lunchtime on the 1st of September? Or something I'm like not that? sure, to be honest. Um, Rene says here, Charlie, do you expect um, for Harlan Pep need a younger player? Right, that needs to make sense, Rene. Let me put them <laughs> words around. Um, I'm guessing. Do you think? I'm guessing he's saying. Do you think Pep needs to put younger players around Haaland? Potentially. Um, I think that's where Folding comes in next season. He'll play more centrally. Uh, De Bruyne is picking up his injuries, not regularly, but he does pick him up now and again. He's still not fully fit from that injury in the Champions League final. Um, so yeah, he's folding in midfield. Uh, 
I'll mention him again, but Paqueta, he's still youngish, I believe. Uh, Doku and Elise, if they come in, either of them, I should say they're both younger players. So I do expect a younger average age, I should say, uh, next season. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it looks like you're just going to have that other, you know, another title fight, you know, on your hands. You're Manchester City, you are who you are. It's you and then 19 teams in the Premier League. Um, it's literally, you know, completely different animal. Um, and Alan says it there, speaking of animals, we need a tank to defend against Haaland. Uh, I think we just, the thing is about defending against Haaland, you just, it's not so much having to defend. It's it's almost a bit like snooker. You've got to try and read Haaland and think of his next move. You've got to think what he's going to do next. Um and yes, you obviously as a defender, you've got to stand tall and do that, and you know defend. That's your job. That's his job. But um, you've got to try and obviously do the, you know, do the hard work of, you know, which I'm, I'm sure a company will have done his analysis of the team, trying to break down where Haaland's weak points are. Which pretty much, I bet that were a quick slideshow, um, and then obviously strong points. I bet that was a long slideshow. Um, so, yeah, we've got to obviously do something. And I know Alan says here, man-marking, but you can get too sucked in with man-marking and all it takes is one turn and a burst of pace, which Haaland has got. We've seen that monster run that where he's just like, I don't know what he looks like. He's grown an extra leg and he just strides in front of himself. It's mad how he runs. Um, but, yeah, Rene says here, do you believe Haaland will win a uh, golden boot? Uh, well... If Kane goes, I think it's pretty much guaranteed. If Kane stays, I still think he'll win it. So, yeah. Yeah, fair shout. Fair shout. Um, right then. Big question. You're starting 11 tomorrow night. Right. Um, Edison in goal, of course. I think that's fairly obvious, to be honest. Um, Diaz, Stones, Walker, back three. Um, sorry, Diaz, Akanji, Walker, back three. Stones mm -hmm. in midfield with Rodri. Uh, Kovacic, De Bruyne, Bernardo, Grealish and Haaland. I'm going to go for. So you don't fancy taking it easy on us at all? Or, <laughs> you know, well, first game yes, of the season. I appreciate gotta, that, mate. Thanks for coming you got to make a point, have not you? <laughs> No, it's, you, you, you have. You have. It's the, fir it's the first game. It is the first game. I mean, for Burnley, it wouldn't surprise me to see... I mean, let me let me just pick a City keeper. Oh, Trafford or Trafford or Murich. Trafford or Murich. <laughs> um, so, for me, Murich starts this game. Murich does, starts this game, hands down. Uh, I think... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Conor Roberts right back. Uh, I don't know whether we're playing our back five or not. Uh, something that company's been doing in pre-season. So I'm going to say Conor Roberts at right back. Yalmar Ekdal, Jordan Bayer and Dara O'Shea as the three at the centre. Uh, left wing back, I'm going to play Bettinho. Um, then I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go two in midfield. I'm going to go Sanderberg and Josh Cullen with Zorori on the left. I'm going to say potentially Zeki Amdouni on the right and Lyle Foster up top. You're probably going, who, who, who and who? He's <laughs> just making up names. Um but yeah, yeah, that that's sort of how I would go for the for this game uh, and see what sort of surprise we can bring. Uh, but the last question I've got to ask you is the big one: How do you think this game is going to go? And uh, your score prediction? Uh, well, I don't think it'll be an easy game. Turf Moor will be right up for it. Per first game back in the Premier League. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a sellout tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, we've sold our stadium out for the first six or seven games, apparently. So, yeah, it'll be a good atmosphere in Turf Moor. I don't think it'll be an easy game. 
So I'm going to go for 2 0 City. 2 0 City. I mean, mate, I'll snap my hand off of that. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything lower than four is just like, mate, just. I, I'd, I'd even sell t shirts with 2 0 written on it saying, Stop the count. <laughs> um, I'll go all out, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, Luke says there, Trafford, I think, will struggle this season with the Premier League. Played at a very first tempo, or a high tempo with his inexperience in young age. Uh, I mean, it's a big jump for Trafford, isn't it? Going from League One to, you know, Premier League. And obviously, he's not really fitted in yet. You know, he's only just come through the door, so he's got to try and find his feet as well. Uh, so, we'll, we'll see with Trafford. But I think Muric has grown in confidence. And for me, that's why I would have Aaron Muric between the sticks. Uh, but let's see what you guys have said for your score predictions. Uh, Pete Astin said he's going for a 1-1. Mate, I would love you forever if that happens. Uh, Rene's going 3-0 Harland hat-trick. No! Um, Anthony says, Dan, ask Chibs who you got to win uh, the Premier League this season. It's got to be Manchester City. <laughs> Uh, Max says 1-1 one, one as well. Got a fair few 1-1s one, coming in. Uh, Alice Davis says, easy to predict. Burnley 6-1 to get them back for the cup <laughs> smashing and the dismantling of recent years. Double that trick for Amdouni to start his record-breaking season. <laughs> Arlen might get one, maybe. I love that. Thanks love that. One. Anthony says 7-0 Burnley. He's not even giving you one. He's not even giving you one. Um, John's going 4-2 City. That's not bad. Rene seems to have changed it now to 6 0 instead of 3. Um, and uh, Alan says 2 1 to the Clarets. I would, I would say mine, but I do have a prediction show coming up at 9 o'clock. Uh, and you guys can join us at 9 pm today. I will be back with uh, Anthony Herbert, the dirty Bristolian. Uh, he will be in the chat and um, we will be going through our predictions. So join us at nine o'clock. Thanks again, Charlie. Let people know again where they can show their support to you and uh, what you do. Cheers for having me on again, mate. Uh, Dug out well, David's football it. channel, City in football content on there. Hit the Apex the F1 channel and at MCFC Hibs on Twitter. Happy days. Happy days. Uh, so please do go check Charlie out. The links are in the description of the video, like I say. So please go and show your support. Also, if you want to, uh, please do drop a like on this video, share it about, let's get this page up and growing. And like I say, everyone in the chat, it, we're all a little community and family. Uh, and subscribe, that's the main one, subscribe. Uh, if you want to get involved with a membership, feel free. It's 2 99 per calendar month, and uh, there's lots of perks to doing it as well. Um, so if you do want to support us by doing that, you can. You can also send super chats, super stickers, the whole shebang. Uh, to show your support it really does help and I will gladly wear it <sighs> other than that it's going to be a, it's it's going to be a tough night it's under the lights at Turf Moor 8 o'clock kickoff. now I'm watching it in a pub up in the lakes <laughs> I'm not angry I'm just disappointed that said everyone thank you very much for watching thanks again for Charlie to uh, giving his uh, insight from the Man City camp and uh, we will see you at 9 o'clock, be there or be square up the Claret <laughs>